Here are the products that for various reasons hinder the effectiveness of weight loss and, if consumed frequently, can predispose to an increase in body mass. What's more, they can exacerbate health problems of people who are overweight or obese. The first group of products that can undermine our efforts to achieve our desired figure are sugary drinks. This applies to both carbonated and non-carbonated fruity drinks. Most people know that carbonated drinks are a source of sugar, but not everyone knows how much sugar is actually in them. In one glass of carbonated drinks there is about 25 to 27 grams of sugar. This is like sweetening one cup of tea with five teaspoons of sugar. In literature, we can find many works that clearly demonstrate that sugary drinks are one of the main causes of obesity and overweight. Here, by the way, let me give you an interesting fact. Sugar is not equal to sugar. I mean that liquid sugar, for example, in the form of drinks is much less satiating than a product with a solid consistency containing the same amount of sugar. So, not only do we provide a lot of sugar in the form of drinks, but it also does not suppress our appetite. It is also important to be aware that consuming sugary drinks contributes to weight gain, as it has an adverse effect on metabolism. This mainly refers to sudden spikes in blood glucose and insulin levels after consuming these products, which cause increased feelings of hunger and at the same time reduce energy expenditure. Studies have shown that frequent consumption of sugary drinks can worsen health problems associated with obesity and overweight. For example, experts have demonstrated that people who regularly consume sugary drinks have a 40% higher risk of fatty liver disease. It is not an exaggeration to say that sugary drinks are one of the main causes of fat accumulation in the liver. Therefore, sugary drinks should be at the top of the list of products to be avoided by people with too much body mass who wish to lose weight. Contrary to popular belief, the situation with fruit juices isn't much better. Fruit juices have the advantage of not being sweetened and containing only natural sugar from fruits. Unfortunately, many people associate them with a healthy product since they do not contain added sugar. And fruits are a part of nature, so it is difficult to say that fruit juice does not belong to healthy products. The problem is that, from a chemical point of view, the natural sugar present in fruit juices is no different from the sugar added, for example, to soft drinks. What's more, many fruit juices contain the same amount of sugar as sweetened drinks. I have often encountered situations in which a parent prohibited a child from drinking cola, but at the same time gave them fruit juice. Personally, I do not see a significant difference between these products apart from the psychological sphere, where we still feel better reaching for a natural fruit juice than for an artificial carbonated drink. But sugar will still remain sugar. As I have already brought sugar to the table, then I will say that it's also beneficial to give up table sugar, which we use to sweeten drinks and dishes. A teaspoon of sugar here, a teaspoon of sugar there, and throughout the day we are able to consume a considerable amount of this ingredient without having much control or awareness of how much we have sweetened our lives. I would like to pause for a moment and make a small request. If you find my videos helpful and would like to help this channel grow, please consider subscribing and if possible also clicking the bell icon next to it. That way you won't miss any valuable videos. Thank you very much and now let's get back to the topic. If we are aiming for faster weight loss, a good solution is to limit the consumption of products based on white processed wheat flour. I'm not only talking about regular white bread here, but also other products, such as dumplings, pasta, pancakes or fritters. These products contain high amounts of carbohydrates, but are poor in dietary fiber, which somewhat counteracts the effect of carbohydrates on health. As a result, products made from white flour have a medium or high glycemic index and load, meaning that after consumption they cause significant fluctuations in blood glucose and insulin levels, which promotes the growth of fat tissue. This effect has been confirmed in many scientific studies. For example, Spanish researchers have noticed that consuming more than two servings of white bread per day was associated with a 40% increase in the risk of developing obesity and overweight. However, this was not observed in the case of whole grain bread. On the other hand, in another publication, its authors have demonstrated that limiting the consumption of white bread is associated with a lower increase in body weight and abdominal fat. 
By the way, due to its low fiber content, white flower products do not provide a feeling of satiety for a long time. Moreover, they have a lower level of many vitamins and minerals compared to their whole grain counterparts. When it comes to dieting, rice wafers and crisp bread can be as tricky as spring weather. Generally, these products are advertised as low calorie, so it would seem that they are ideal for those wanting to lose a few kilos. I observe in my patients a deep conviction that replacing wet or wholemeal bread with crisp bread is the perfect way to fight obesity. Unfortunately, reality can brutally disprove these plans. Because if we look at the caloric value of one slice of light bread, it is lower than the caloric value of one slice of wheat or wholemeal bread. The problem lies in the fact that one slice of ordinary bread gives us a greater feeling of satiety than one slice of crisp bread. As a result, few people stop at one slice of light bread. And if someone used to consume two slices of traditional bread, on a diet they might reach for, for example, five slices of crisp bread. Then, the caloric balance is zero and sometimes even more calories are supplied by eating crisp bread than regular. Unfortunately, few people take this fact into account and it is another dead end when it comes to dieting. It is important to be aware that if you take into account not just the mass of a single slice but 100% grams of a particular product, the caloric content of crisp bread and rice wafers is higher than that of wheat or wholemeal bread. For example, 100 grams of crisp bread provides about 360 kilocalories, while the caloric content of 100 grams of wheat bread is 100 kilocalories less. Because crisp bread is advertised as light and not so caloric, many people fall into this trap and recklessly take many slices every day, only to be surprised that their body mass stays the same. For this reason, crisp bread and rice wafers have found their place on this list. Many of us have been misled by the large-scale advertising campaigns of some cereals and breakfast flakes, believing them to be a good choice for those trying to lose weight. In reality, this is not always the case, as not all flakes are equal. Often, they contain highly processed flakes, dried fruits, sugar and glucose fructose syrup, which does not help with weight loss. In some of these products, there can be up to 25 or even 35 grams of sugar per 100 grams of product. This means that in some breakfast cereals and muesli, one quarter or one third of their mass is pure sugar. Therefore, if you decide to buy such products, I encourage you to read the labels carefully and pay attention to the composition and nutritional value. In my opinion, breakfast cereals or muesli should contain no more than about 10 grams of sugar per 100 grams of product and should also contain at least 10 grams of fiber. To make this happen, our ready-made mix should include flakes, such as oat flakes, and a small amount of dried fruit as well as products rich in fat, such as nuts, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds or sesame seeds. This will make muesli have a more balanced proportion of protein, fat, carbohydrates and dietary fiber. When dieting, it is a good idea to limit the consumption of fruits high in sugar. At the same time, however, there is no need to completely exclude fruits from the diet. This is because scientific studies suggest that consuming fruits probably does not lead to overweight and obesity. And this is because in addition to fructose or sugar, many of them also contain valuable vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and dietary fiber for health. In addition, fruits increase the feeling of satiety, so we reach for other caloric products including snacks less often. Therefore, looking at fruits exclusively in terms of the sugar they contain is unfair and damaging. Nevertheless, it is better to replace some fruits with vegetables. So, the fruits that we should reach less often while dieting include bananas, grapes, pineapple, mango, cherries and pears. Additionally, it is also a good idea to give up most sweet fruit products such as dried fruits, candied fruits, fruits in sugar syrup, jams and compotes. When it comes to fruits, I should also mention that it is best to avoid fruit yogurts. Besides the fruit content, which is not impressive at all, as the fruits usually make up no more than 5-10% to of the product's mass, these products usually also contain sugar, which is not desirable. Here I emphasize that when talking about the health benefits of yogurts, we usually mean probiotic natural yogurts, not flavored yogurts. We should not equate these two products. 
I strongly encourage people to avoid all kinds of confectionery while dieting, including crackers, biscuits, croissants, donuts or cakes. These products are usually very caloric and full of sugar and many of them also contain relatively high amounts of trans fats. Countless scientific works have confirmed that consuming trans fats increases insulin resistance, which is a direct way to gain weight. Additionally, trans fats intensify health problems associated with overweight and obesity, such as inflammation, fatty liver disease, and an increased risk of developing cardiovascular diseases, including ischemic heart disease, by 40%. A similar situation is the case with all kinds of fast food, which also contributes to providing high amounts of energy and usually contains a lot of trans fats. We are talking about products such as hot dogs, fries, burgers, pizzas and nuggets. Therefore, I encourage you to eliminate these products from your menu. Discussing products to avoid when dieting, fried food cannot be overlooked. This applies to both fried meat dishes and fried flour dishes, such as pancakes or french fries. Such dishes are high in calories and contain processed fat, which is not good for our health. I would like to add that a fried product can be up to three times more caloric than a cooked product. Moreover, toxic compounds such as acrylamide, heterocyclic aromatic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are produced during frying. Scientists have repeatedly proven that the consumption of fried food is one of the significant factors causing overweight and obesity. I would also like to emphasize that fried products contribute to the development of cardiovascular diseases and cancers. Furthermore, people who regularly consume fried food have a higher mortality rate due to circulatory system diseases. Therefore, the basic rule of a diet is to consume fried food as little as possible or to use short frying times. When following a diet, it is a good practice to limit the consumption of products containing monosodium glutamate. This popular flavor enhancer improves the taste of products to which it is added. Studies have shown that people who consume products with monosodium glutamate are more likely to be overweight. Monosodium glutamate can mainly be found in highly processed foods such as bouillon cubes, powdered soups and sauces, instant meals, canned food, sausages, deli meats and fast food. The current state of knowledge shows that an excess of salt in our diet leads to an increase in body mass. This is partly due to the fact that we perceive salty products as attractive in terms of taste, so we consume them in high quantities, which in turn is associated with the caloric surplus. I will also add here that salt can disrupt certain biochemical processes in our body. Researchers have noticed that large amounts of this ingredient cause hypothalamic resistance to leptin. This means that our body, due to the supply of large amounts of salt, becomes insensitive to the hormone called leptin, whose task is to cause a feeling of satiety. In addition, eating salty snacks increases thirst, which is often quenched with caloric drinks. What's more, large amounts of salt, or more specifically sodium, cause water retention in the body, keeping our body weight higher. As you can see, salt, although it does not provide calories, still favors gaining body mass. This does not mean, however, that when following a diet you should completely give up eating salt. But I think it's worth limiting reaching for it especially salty snacks, which don't bring anything beneficial anyway. I'm thinking here mainly of potato chips, salted nuts, sticks, crackers or salted popcorn. It would be a mistake not to include alcohol on today's list, mainly because it is high in calories. This is especially true of beer, as we consume the most of it by volume compared to other drinks. For example, two bottles of regular beer, which is not a particular challenge for many people, is just over 500 kilocalories. That is practically the same as the average daily caloric deficit needed to lose weight effectively. To illustrate, if we wanted to burn the number of calories provided by two bottles of beer, we would have to walk at a normal pace for about two hours. Therefore, if we add two beers to our standard weight loss diet occasionally, we can consider that they are a loss in terms of weight loss success. The more often we reach for alcohol, such as beer for example, the less effective our diet will be. What's more, consuming alcohol encourages us to reach for, for example, salty snacks, which I just mentioned. Thus, alcohol can sabotage our weight loss plans in various ways. 
The more you avoid the products I described in this video, the easier it will be for you to lose weight. If you have some extra time, I would like to invite you to watch another video on my channel about habits that are harmful for our brain. To watch it, just click on the thumbnail that appeared on the screen. And that's all from me for now. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.